as I have just explained the first phase of the maggot production so we are now entering the next phase of the maggot production we are having the maggots now that was harvested on the on the fields that side we brought them here and we have now come to wash them in a drum full of very very hot water 60 degrees up to 70 please do not do it any more higher than 70 degrees as you will burn all your proteins and lose them so now you have your maggot drying tables here in front of you where after they've been washed they are put onto this table and they are left to drip dry but as you can see underneath the tables they are still alive so maggots do not just die when you put them in that type of heat hotted water so have an area that is uh, that has got enough space around like a little little lip on the area so that they do, they cannot leave the area where you put your drying tables and as you can see here they are even walking over the side of this table and they are coming closer to this side as well so yeah be aware that your maggot can still escape after it has been into in 70 degrees of hot water uh, you might just lose them then after this phase when they are now drip dried they are now being taken to be treated in, uh, on the fire as you can see here uh, they are now being grilled and fried uh, just until they are dry so much so that you do not lose all the oil inside of them this is the final phase where you will now really find out that the maggot has now died and it will not walk away from you anymore so yes here you have the final product and from here it will now enter the other the final stage of it uh, before it will be mulled into mac meal so we will now remove them and place them onto onto dry uh, uh, sails where they will be left to dry through the day in the sun just to make sure that there's no moist so that you prevent any rot possible rottening that can take place because once they start rottening apart from the smell you have lost your whole harvest right and then from here it will now be milled and it will be become mac meal that is the root of the maggot once you reach this stage it is now ready to be used in your animal feed as the protein source instead of being using fish meal which is very expensive now here in zambia we produce this mac meal uh, in a way that if we import from namibia the fish meal then it is costing us 52,000 kwacha per ton landed here here we are producing the mac meal at 7, uh, 2700 kwacha per ton and then after mixture you will notice that uh, this is still roughage here this is not the final phase of the feed but now you can see this is the feed component now being completed and ready to be fed to your chickens or to your cattle or to your sheep or goats or to your fish etc etc now here, here by us we have a fish pellet machine so we are making fish pellets which are also being flavored for dog feed and as well as chicken pellets, sheep pellets, cattle pellets, pig pellets, everything. Everything can be fed from this. Yes, so yeah, there you have the final product that you can see. And uh, as I say, this is your, this is your mag meal. But along with the mag meal, there is two other products that you have to add which are also being produced on this farm which is a subject i will discuss after this i have to apologize i got to walk over 800 meters to get from the one stage of the, to the other stage so it's a bit hard but nevertheless let me just show you a couple of pictures um this is spinach that is now exactly been cut down two weeks ago up to the bottom part and this is a two weeks growth and then we come to the to the brussels sprouts here and to the cauliflower uh, as you can see the 
cauliflower heads busy forming there on the inside um, but this is the type of plant that you will be producing using the organic fertilizer it is it is gigantic uh, there is leaves here that extends the width of my chest uh, if I have to show you uh, they are standing almost 700 cent, seven, seven, 700 centimeters high almost close to a meter if I stand next to it it takes me on my belt uh, they are very 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 huge uh, that's what we call proper organic fertilizer then in the far part here on the inside you will see there's a couple of very chicks being kept here in this cage then we have the turkeys on this side this is all just young birds that we are producing here on the farm and then we have of course the ducks as you can see this is young ducks ready to be released into the outside free range camps uh, and then furthermore on this side we have another lot of village chickens that we are just keeping here as home birds because their eggs is fantastically nice after being fed this organic feed inside here you will see very young guinea fowls uh, literally hundreds of them uh, that we breed here on the farm also being fed on this organic feed that we produce with the mag meal and azola as well as duckweed so from here I am going to take you oh my goodness I'm going to take you I'm sorry I'm going to take you to the brooders where we are receiving the day old chicks which we then grow out in the brooders until they three weeks old before we move them to the to the open camps uh, where they will now be free ranging until the day that they are being slaughtered this is uh, our brooder house with all the little small chicks that we keep inside the brooders until they're ready after three weeks to go out now these little babies arrived about three days ago they're very strong they're very perfect and if you remember i showed you a picture of the feet that i was holding in my hand if you now look down and you look at the feet that's here between them you will notice that it is one and the same and they are very lucky and they are very happy to eat and there you go so in other words for us currently here in zambia it will cost us 38 kwacha 79 ngwe to raise a chicken from day old until it weighs 2.1 2.3 kilogram to be ready to be slaughtered on commercial feed with us it is 27 kwacha to do the same using our own feed that we produce here so there's a big saving here it's absolutely viable uh, there's a price difference of 11 kwacha that is now a new profit in one's pocket by not using commercial feed in the background we have a different project it is also vegetable production but this project here is to show the people in the villages that indeed under the trees if you just uh, chop off all the overhanging uh, branches as you can see here on top of me and you can just filter through a little bit of sun you can still produce extremely wealthy and strong uh, uh, vegetables which is organic as you can see in my background here this is our organic fertilizer the same one that I showed you in the first phase of the maggot and organic fertilizer production uh, they are extremely good even in the shade and the reason for us showing this to the people is to prevent them and to teach them to prevent them to, to carry on with uh, deforestation for the sake of producing vegetables or who knows what else they do because uh, our country is it's constrained with a lot of uh, trees being chopped down lately uh, for people trying to open areas where they can 
where they can produce vegetables for the market. Now, on our right hand side here, you will see we've got the Moscovy ducks. This duck here is ready to be slaughtered on the right. But on the left hand side, there's the breeding stock for those little ducks that you saw on the other side and some of the female Moscovies. Um, and then here on the right hand side, once again, is the village chicken uh, parental stock of those village, little village chickens I just showed you in those uh, cages where I come from. Uh, and they are just being kept here to produce us some nice fresh organic eggs that is cholesterol free because they are fed on the feed that we produce here and then on the far end we have uh, as you can hear we have the turkey camp they are also all on free range uh, they are also just eating our feed uh, as you can see they strong they healthy they pretty and what a pleasure to have this bird. Um, you will be amazed that the productivity of a turkey, if you just produce fertilized eggs, which sells for 30 kwacha per egg here, you will realize that a female, one female turkey will bring in 3,600 kwacha a year, with the cost to maintain her is 420 kwacha for the whole year. Um, so what a long, what a, what a beautiful project to take on. Right, this is then uh, the early maturity fruit trees that we have here in Zambia. They are very small, but they are already fruiting. So, yeah, this is uh, how, how the garden looks at this stage in the middle of winter. It's 6 degrees, sometimes 4 degrees here in the morning. We still have very, very, very green grass. We still have a lot of flowers. Uh, if I have to take you to the left just to show you, is that uh, indeed, as in the far end there, you can see it is still very, very, very green. It is still super green here by us in our gardens due to the fact that we use the organic fertilizer that we are producing here. Uh, going down the line, you will see flowers are everywhere. Uh, the plants are prospering even in this extreme weather um, for Zambia you know to have a weather that is that is 6 degrees and 4 degrees it's a little bit harsh it's very harsh conditions for a country like Zambia but as I say they perform extremely well due to the fertilizer that we use so yeah there in the background we have just finished the examination class for today uh, the people is on their way going home but as you can see everywhere the lawns is good it's beautiful uh, yeah so now I'm going to going to take you to the to the, to the home vegetable garden to show you how the plants and the things are doing there. Uh, this is uh, a home garden from where we provide to ourselves and the workers that is on the farm uh, the basic needs in vegetables that they may have. Uh, yeah, and then on your far side there where I'm pointing at, this is an avocado pear tree. Last year, this one tree provided 3,114 avocado pears. This year, the flowering is even almost double than what it was before. It is unbelievable what this organic fertilizer does. And I don't want to throw it over your head all the time, but that is, this is the truth. Now, on my left, my wife made a challenge with me and she told me that she's going to plant millis in, a, in the winter here in Zambia, which was never ever being done. I told her it's impossible due to the fact that it's so cold. And she said to me, I'm going to do it. And in fact, she did. And if you look at them, and you may be enlarging this picture, you will notice that they are even making cops. Most of them are having two cops, although about 40% are having three cops. This is, this is just a little small test that she did, just to prove the point to me. Now, if I take you to the, 
to the pawpaw tree. Um, a pawpaw's harvest is normally about 20 pawpaws per year, per tree. This tree has 89 pawpaws in it. I will take it up like this that you can see. There's not a single branch in this tree that does not have a bunch of 20 pawpaws at once. Um, how many bunches I cannot multiply for you. Uh, if I have to take it through, you know, even the smallest of smallest branches, like the one there on top, as you can see, it even have its own little popo on it. Uh, right through this, you can see the popos. This is one of the biggest statements we've made with the organic fertilizer being used here on our farm. And I have to be very honest with you. This is a shock for every person that comes here. Because this is just never been seen before in a country that is so big in producing popos. So we have 89 popos on this tree, where compared to what a very good popo tree will deliver you 20, between 18 and 20 popos a year. So we have made the statement, we have made the proof. It's right here. The organic fertilizer is excellent. After this, I will uh, now discuss with you the, the duckweed and the azola. Thank you so much for watching.